On election day in America, more than a third of eligible voters don't show up. Sometimes it's half, and it's been like that since World War I. That's despite attempts to rev up voters by Beyonce, Kid Rock, Oprah. To understand why Americans don't vote, or really what gets them to vote, I hopped on a snowmobile. Sure did. But actually, let's start here. It's probably pretty obvious from these boxes <laughs> that are already starting to pile up behind me that I am moving to Washington, D.C. That was late last year, and instead of flying from L.A. to here in D.C., I realized I had an opportunity, a real opportunity, to get to know my fellow Americans a little bit better. So I mapped out a cross-country drive, visiting what some call flyover states, to talk to voters, to listen to voters about what's on their mind. That meant every time I stopped for gas, walked into a store, grabbed a bite, grabbed a drink, I struck up conversation to see what people are thinking about, what issue is most pressing to them. Politicians like to call these kitchen table issues because supposedly average Americans sit at the kitchen table to talk about money, healthcare, their kids' education, or whatever President Trump tweeted. And maybe that's true, but the point here was not to conduct a scientific poll. I mean, this is just me writing down answers in a notebook. We also know that polls can be misleading. Sometimes they're wrong. This is, a, I mean, we're all sitting here sort of silence in, in shock. Why did so many polls have Clinton leading for so long? Because that's what the people were saying. <laughs> I'm not a pollster. I am not a scientist. I'm not a researcher. I'm just a journalist. And I've stopped a lot along the way to talk to people and mostly to take the time to listen to them. In all, I talked to 122 people in nine states, and I kept track of what they shared with me. And you want to know my biggest takeaway? It's that Americans, that you, you want our leaders here in Washington to behave a lot more like you do, with respect, with civility, with kindness. And you know what those words are? They're not really issues, they're values. Our shared values are under assault like never before. On every front, the ultra-left is waging war on the values shared by everyone in this room. I do think long-term that what moves people are not issues, but values. Who am I? What do I believe? What do I stand for? The 3,200 mile trip gave me a lot of time to listen to politicians from both parties talk about values. It was also a welcome distraction for this Californian driving through weather like this. That drive gives new meaning to the term white knuckle driving. That was really intense, kind of scary. But it always seemed to be worth it because on the other end, I was met with something different people called the same thing. Southern hospitality, Minnesota nice, a warm welcome, which is exactly what I got in Iowa. How nice were those people and how beautiful is this town? I, it's not even Christmas anymore and I feel like I'm in a Christmas movie. This movie seemed more like Groundhog Day because I approached people asking roughly the same question and got a lot of the same answers. Candidates and parties aside, what's on your mind? Um, I'd like to see a little sanity. Nice. Just treating each other well. In America, everybody getting along a little better. Um, around the world, getting along a little better. Um, you know, trying to see each other's point of views and um, trying to come up with some common ground. To make sure I'm, I'm thinking about more than just myself. It's like, it's a lot of other people in this world, so why don't I tend to take care of it? Each of those people live in different states. Iowa, Ohio, Michigan, with very different life experiences, but all seem to share a common desire that we just consider one another a little bit more, that we respect one another a little bit more. And keep in mind that going into this trip, I wanted to understand the issues which would drive voters' decisions in 2020. Is it healthcare, climate change, jobs, guns, the economy? And all of those things came up. I, I want my freedom of speech. I want my freedom of, I want, I want my freedom to bear arms. Health insurance is expensive, isn't it? Jobs. I mean, the only stable jobs in this town is if you work for the state or you work for school. I don't want to have student loans, and we're just like we're like racking them up, and we're trying to keep them in school. Things like, um, well, infrastructure is, is a big deal. We have terrible roads in Michigan. My biggest concern is climate change. Either before or after voters shared those sort of issues on their mind, inevitably the conversation turned to presidents. I am. <sighs> 
at Mount Rushmore. It is 21 degrees outside. But not the stone-faced kind, the tweeting kind. Okay! The kind of president who inspires this. I'm gonna tell you what's that. Okay. All right, I'm gonna show you. Show me. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for supporting our president. I appreciate it so much. I really do. Also, the kind of president who inspires this. Ah, jeez, there's so many things. Get that asshole just, out, of the, out of the White House. Look what he's going to do to us. Just talking uh, So many there. kids are going to die now because of him. Anything else on your mind? Getting rid of Trump. Getting rid of Trump. <laughs> so there's all that. But kind. Kind is actually the key word of this story, of my experience driving all the way across the country. Because out of the 122 people I talked to, I did the math and roughly two out of three of them brought up some version of respect, civility, kindness as something they want to see again, values they want to see again, especially here in Washington. Mr. Speaker, the chair will put Mr. Mr. Speaker, the questions I on the adoption of amendments, vote on the committee those in rising. favor say aye. Mr. Speaker. So yeah, it can be much easier to listen away from Washington. And what I learned from chatting up tourists at Old Faithful, from parents of a daughter with special needs, and from a college student who's just struggling to pay for school was ultimately that we're not so different. And while no one knows what's next for America, we all want what's next to be good. The thing that stands out most to me was a conversation with a lady in Wyoming. And she said, whatever happened to us just being nice to each other? We can disagree with someone, but that doesn't mean we have to be mean to them. So what's next with this story? Yes, I mentioned Oprah, I mentioned snowmobiles, and I promise I won't let you down. But we're also gonna look at a time that no Gen Z or millennial was alive to remember. Of. A time when a peanut farmer became president. One of the very first tasks facing any new president is the unification of our country. But the biggest thing is that we'll look at what really drives a person to vote. And here's a spoiler, it's almost always values. So what are your values? What gets you to vote? What gets you excited to vote, maybe for the very first time this year? Well, here's how to reach me. I'd love to know what's on your mind. Tell me where you live, maybe how old you are, but most importantly, tell me what you value the most.